Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the On the Sideline podcast with Jackson and Kyle. I am Jackson, and I'm joined here, as always, by the man who is on a fully guaranteed contract. Kyle, Kyle, how are you doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Better than most players if I'm on a fully guaranteed contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's still crazy. We're going to do some offseason grades here. We're going to do some free agency grades, and it still feels like there's a bunch of players that are still up for grabs. Yeah, seems like there's still a lot of moves to be made. So uh, what we're going to, and you know, we're gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the AFC. Uh, we're going to do grades for free agency so far. Uh, next week, we'll do the NF. And right after that, we have our, our draft coverage. So we're, we're you know, f- football is the offseason, but we got plenty to talk about. Yeah, plenty to talk about indeed. Will Jordan Montgomery be signed by the time we get to draft coverage? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, there should be a lot of, <laughs> I mean, hopefully we don't get to, to, to that. Yeah, that's been a baseball. Baseball is a bigger mess than football, which is just funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, what a time. I was up at six in the morning watching uh, some Dodgers Padres. So that was fun. Um, okay. They were playing well, in well, Korea. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. Gotcha. Uh, Kyle, you might have a sports problem. Well, watching Dodgers. It was opening day. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying it's, it's sort of the equivalent of like when you see someone uh, like drinking alcohol right out of the handle or something. It's, like it's not, a, not a guaranteed it's a problem, but like it's a it maybe a red flag. I'm concerned about yeah. you. Did you fill out a March Madness bracket? I did. I did fill out my March Madness uh, bracket. I got one of North Carolina to win it. North Carolina. That's a good pick. I, I mean, I, I watch so much March Madness in so little regular season college basketball. Yeah. This is probably the least amount I've watched in my life so gotcha my i think i picked i think i have arizona over kentucky in the final and then i okay. think i have yukon and creighton in the final four already gotcha. getting off track yes what are we doing here kyle everyone's tuned out already no one's watching free agency grades afc edition someone in the chat said uh niners grade uh no we're not doing the niners next week we'll do the niners uh, G- uh, jesus who's in the chat uh next week we will uh we will do that is it jesus or jesus I think Jesus. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Jesus M, not Jesus Christ. Could be Jesus M Christ. That's true. Yeah, Jesus Messiah, maybe. Yeah. Muadib. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Go, go. We gotta focus. We're 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 getting (laughs) off track here. Uh, Let's. You want to start off? Let's go to the. uh, Let's start off with your division. Let's go to the Buffalo Bills. uh, See what they've done this free agency. Uh, You know, not one of the busier teams this free agency you know uh they they did uh get mitchell trubisky back so i guess they have that going for them they you know uh gave De- uh, Deion dawkins an extension they got rid of a lot of players was kind of their main thing but uh i don't know uh, they, they did add you know uh curtis samuel which i think is kind of an interesting uh ad uh for them but and they did lose gabe davis kind of a i don't know might be a lateral move i don't know uh i'll, I'll say like c because i just think again the way i view it is what did you have going in and where did you end up? It's kind of what I, I think. I don't think that they, I don't think they screwed anything up here is what I would say, but I also don't think they got better in any way. I don't think they screwed anything up but based on kind of what their situation was. I agree with you. I also had C for the bills, um, you know, and you know, if they end up actually, cause I, I think they were one of the three teams I saw rumored to be involved for Justin Simmons. So obviously that would change things too a bit, but it does kind of feel like this team over these last few seasons, and I would say a few is in like three to four years with this core, has solely kind of chipped away at itself. And I mean, huge credit to them. They've been able to kind of hold serve and be, you know, still really good and be a competitive team and, you know, look like they could be a Super Bowl contender some of these years. But I'm just wondering how much more can they continue to chip away at this roster that they built all the, you know, a few years ago and still be as competitive as they have been the last few years, probably still going to be really good as long as Josh Allen's on the team. And, you know, guys like Trey white, obviously since his injuries has not been the same player, uh, you know, Jordan Poyer is obviously going to be the biggest miss here, but I, I just think that overall they've chipped away at a lot, but I still think they're going to be pretty good. So I'm not too concerned. It's just something to watch going forward. Exactly. It's it's just I'm I'm with you. It almost feels like you know uh, it's a lower grade due to like what they've done in previous years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there, there's no Von Miller in this one or anything like that, right? Now, granted, mm-hmm. Simmons could be that player, um, and they could draft really well. Those those pr- pretty much going to be their goal. And 
that's kind of what you have to do anyways when you have a tighter cap space situation, which happens when you're paying a superstar quarterback. So they got to hit on those draft picks and they got to fill out this roster that way. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Let's move on. Why don't we? Let's go to the Miami Dolphins. Kyle, what grade are you giving the Miami Dolphins? All right, let me pull up Miami here. I had this. I think I have this written alphabetically. Uh, Miami, I, I ended up going with a B. I, you know, I know some of the big name stuff was like, I, I still don't understand quite the, um, the, you know, you obviously releasing Xavier Howard. I get it. You know, you let um, Christian Wilkins go, and I felt like that was just a big one. And, but overall, I thought they actually did okay bringing some players in, like. Jordan Poyer on a one-year deal, I think is pretty good. Shaq Barrett on a one-year flyer, I still think he provides, you know, he's not the same player he was at his peak. I think he does provide some, provide, you know, still provide some talent. And I just go across the board and said they retooled a little bit better. But, you know, I don't know how much better this team's going to be, but I thought they did okay. So I I went with B. Yeah, I also, we're in lockstep. I went with B as well. You know, the, the two moves I really loved were Kendall Fuller and Jordan Poyer, which I think getting that secondary, you know, they tried, they thought Xavier Howard would work with the Vic Fangio thing. It didn't work out. But like, I don't know, Kendall Fuller and if Jalen Ramsey is still Jalen Ramsey, which I thought he was good last year, but that could be a mm-hmm. great cornerback tandem. They added another really good safety. Uh, I like the Shaq Barrett signing as well. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm, feel like I'm falling for the Dolphins again. I mean, it, it, they they managed based on what how this free agency started when they you know they released Howard and they let Wilkins go. You were like, oh man, is this going to be a disaster? I actually think they recovered really well and brought in some brought in some pretty good pieces here. And I mean, is Ramsey, Fuller, Poyer, uh, Holland? I almost said Hyde, uh, Poyer and Holland, the uh, best secondary in the uh, NFL. It's up there. It, it's on paper. It's yeah. uh, again. Secondaries are weird, right? Like on paper does not necessarily mean going to be the best, but yeah, I mean, and this is kind of why I I was so high in the Dolphins last year. Is I'm like, man, uh, games are one on the outside. Look at what they have on the outside. Uh, you know, it feels like they're they're building the team the right way. Now again, losing Wilkins stinks. It hurts, but I'd rather them do this than pay a bunch of money for Wilkins and still have the issues in the secondary. Yep. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And you know, another Jalen Phillips sleep too. I think it's in the cards, and I I also think like Van Ginkle's a you know a nice depth piece that they lost too. But yeah. I mean, I still think if they get another piece, you know, if they get another leap out of Phillips, and he becomes maybe one of those you know higher level edge rushers compared with Bear with this secondary, this could be a pretty formidable defense for sure. It was good yeah. when it was healthy; they just weren't healthy for a lot last year because Ramsey was hurt. Right, and yeah, Ramsey hurt, and then they lost both their edge rushers uh, towards the end of the year, which sucked. Uh, speaking of Good one healthy. Uh, the Jets are trying to build the all good one healthy team at this point with the you know addition <laughs> of Mike Williams and Tyron Smith. Uh, they also added Morgan Moses. Uh, they added Tarod Taylor, trying to make sure that they have some good, uh, you know, uh, an actual backup this season. Kyle, this is an A plus for me. I- I'm all aboard yeah. this. Uh, I think this is exactly what they needed to do adding, helping out the offensive line, getting another receiver. So they really go into the draft. There's not one position you're like, that's what they have, like last season was. Who knows how healthy Aaron Rodgers will be? Who knows if Tyron Smith or Mike Williams will stay healthy? But the upside for this team now, I really, uh, you know, Super Bowl uh, winner. Like, that's their upside at this point, which we weren't saying heading into this free agency. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the, the, this is the kind of team that should be taking chances on guys like Tyron Smith and uh, Mike Williams, right? They have no yeah. choice at this point. This is what they're mm-hmm. in for. This is what they got with you know, getting an older quarterback. And I completely agree with all of it. This is an A for me as well. I thought they did well at that. I, I do think they could get another edge guy potentially. Maybe that's what they target in the draft. Maybe Will McDonald takes a leap in year two, something like that. But I do think that's probably the one thing they could get, but it's got such an awesome secondary behind it. You may not need an elite edge guy to really work with this team because this defense is going to be nasty. Um, you got a legit two receiver option now. You got Brees Hall healthy in the backfield, and then as long as Rodgers is ready to go, um, th- this could be a this could be a really fantastic team this year. I mean, I think they're geared up for it. Yeah, uh, you know, losing Bryce Hall does or uh, Bryce, uh, Bryce oh, uh, the dog is not happy. I said his name wrong. Uh, Bryce Huff losing him in free agency definitely was a you know kind of the one negative here. But yeah, uh, uh, did you give your grade? Yeah, that was an A. Yeah, a, a, not an A plus though. 
Uh, I didn't do plus minuses. I don't think, okay. but uh, that makes sense. You know, I could throw some in if it makes sense. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll I'll, uh, I'll also not do plus or minus, but I'll probably throw one or two. And Kyle, <laughs> uh, I'm very interested in how you feel. The Patriots, not not super. I mean, first off, we just have to say the fact that they did in fact sign uh, KJ Osborne as the only receiver is just incredible. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, that feels fitting. Um, mm-hmm. I have a D. I have a D for the Patriots this this offseason so far. I will say, like, I didn't want them to go into free agency just throwing money around because they had money to spend. I think they were first or they had $90 million in cap space before free agency started, right? Um, I didn't want them to do all of that. However, for a team that is going with a first year head coach, a first year head coach from the defensive side of the ball. You have desperate needs at left tackle, receiver, and quarterback going into the draft now. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I guess you could say with Jacoby Brissett, it's not a desperate quarterback need. Maybe you could punt it one more year and just let Brissett play, but you do have a need for, you know, a long term quarterback answer. And that's usually the most important question in football. So um, you have a need for quarterback, left tackle, and wide re- number one wide receiver. Uh, going into the draft. And I think that one of the things that like you, you just wanted to see at least like one splash, right? Like I, I would have been okay with paying Tyron Smith saying like, I'm getting an elite left tackle, even if he's older, even if he has his injury history, something like that. I just, you know, I would have liked to see them try and get aggressive for one guy to really help this team because we've seen time and time again, it is not easy for rookie quarterbacks. If they do go the rookie quarterback route to succeed, without you know skill talent without talent around it and i think one of the more frustrating things about this patriots team last season and when fans were getting so frustrated wasn't the fact that this team was bad because it was a bad team last year i think we all accepted that it's that it looks so talentless especially on the offensive side of the ball and i just don't think there's enough talented players on this team so why would you go into the offseason with more cap space than anybody else and you still have the most cap space in the league and you didn't bring in any talented players. So maybe they have a trade up their sleeve. Maybe they have something like that. Maybe they go after T. Higgins that way, although I don't know if he's even going to get traded. So I just don't see why I just don't see why they did nothing. And you know, KJ Osborne, I think it's a nice player, but you know, him and Kendrick Bourne are not number one receivers. Right. I mean, that, that's the whole the reason why KJ Osborne is like he's like an underrated like number three receiver that the Patriots are going to be that's going to be their one addition. I think I'm with you. I had D as well. Um, I think my criticism is that I kind of feel like they're doing the Bill Belichick thing, but without the pros of having defensive coordinator Bill Belichick on the team, you know, um, I think the, the, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this, Kyle, they can't go rookie quarterback here now, right? Like that can't be what they're doing. I think they're going to, I mean, I wouldn't I be just, surprised if Brissett starts, but I think a rookie quarterback is probably going to be taken at three. It would I mean, be really I mean, funny if they just continue the Belichick thing and trade back. I mean, I wouldn't even hate. I honestly I wouldn't. I I wouldn't. I, I've done my quarterback evaluation. I'll just say I wouldn't hate that. Uh, with you know, I think there is a kind of a bit of a jump. But like, what if what if Drake May falls? You know, like now and like, what if you want to say, hey, let's punt on the quarterback. Let's get a receiver. Like, what if Caleb Williams has a bong video uh, come out opening day? You know, like or draft day. Like that's what that's kind of my criticism is. I think that they. It's, you know, it's not a great situation if you're going wide receiver here in the draft. And I think it's a borderline horrible situation if you're going rookie. Like you can't go rookie quarterback. You just can't. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I think they're going to end up doing it. Um, I guess There has been rumors that they're going to trade back with the Vikings, you know, as they got a second first round pick. Maybe that's something that happens. But uh, it certainly does not look um, does not look ideal right now for a rookie quarterback situation. But like I said, maybe they have something up their sleeve. I don't know. We'll see. But I, I still think you have to take the quarterback. Like you, you still need the quarterback in the room to see if he's the guy. Well, well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, if you're doing that, you got to get receivers, I think. So uh, that's why they get a D let's move on to, let's go to the Baltimore Ravens. Why don't we, the Ravens, obviously their big splash was Derrick Henry to a relatively reasonable D two-year $16 million deal with an additional uh, $2 million each year in incentives and only $9 million guaranteed, so they can get out of it uh, after a year if it kind of falls off. That's kind of their big move. They did also re-sign Justin Matabuke. They lost uh, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Queen, which is kind of their biggest biggest 
in here. But as a whole, uh, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to go see here. Like they had a little bit of money. They spent that the way they wanted to. They didn't you know, lose anything too massive. They did lose a player. Uh, I, I think this is a solid. Uh, I think they, they got a little better, which is what you should be doing. If you get better, I'm going to see. Um, I actually have uh, A. I, th- right. I think it's an A Good, move. We can argue. I think they're. Yeah, I think it's a Der- Derrick Henry is an A move right now, especially at this price. They didn't pay Derrick Henry $15 million a year, which I think would have been a mistake. But they paid Derrick Henry, you know, a great contract for what is still all this time later. You know, maybe it finally drops off a cliff. We'll see. But I think he's still an elite level running back. And, you know, we, we've we gone through this bit before a few times now. that the The top five running backs still have value, right? The top five guys still present some win value. It's after that where running back really starts to drop off. And as far as I'm concerned, I still think Derrick Henry is a top five guy in this league. So getting that kind of guy at that kind of contract, I think is really good. And I don't know, man, like I know Queen made a, he looked a lot better last year, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that impactful. I just don't think it's going to be. I think this is the team that had, answers at linebacker i think they kept Ro- roquan smith as the better linebacker right so i just don't think it's going to be that much of an issue losing patrick queen yeah i i, I guess i'm just the one person that likes patrick patrick queen i guess it's really what it comes down to is because i feel like no no one's uh i think he's really good i think that's a real uh benefit to uh the steelers which we'll talk to and talk about in a second uh, i think that is kind of a you know i think it'll hurt which is kind of my that's the reason why i had them lower yeah i mean I'm also a big fan of the Derrick Henry move. You could you could talk me into a B for sure because he is, you know, I, I do think he'll be really good. And I, I get what they're trying to do. I just, you know, uh, I like Patrick Queen. I think he's good. Yeah, I mean, I think he's a solid football player. And like I said, he's gotten a lot better over the last couple seasons. And I, I think it's more additive for Pittsburgh than it is, you know, in, you know, subtractive to... I think subtractive is a word. We'll go with it. Um, you know, I think it's more additive to Pittsburgh than it is subtractive to Baltimore. Because I think Baltimore has answers at the position. And they still have the draft that I think they, you know, they, they're going to have to get some edge rush help, I think, especially. But I still think this defense is going to be nasty. I don't think it's going to drop off all that much. And they just double down on what their strength. You know, I, I love teams that were close. You know, they definitely felt like they were a Super Bowl contender, and they're just going to double down on it and say, now we got Derrick Henry in this backfield, and we're going to be the best running team of all time. Let me, let me just kind of also by saying, you know, those weren't the only two moves was Henry and Queen. Uh, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. Clowney, are they going to get him uh, back? Or Kyle Van Noy, what's happening there? Uh, they did lose Odell, which I know it didn't kind of didn't work out last year, but uh, and maybe they'll resign him. I, I don't know, but uh, you know. That's still a they, they I think they still need to address the receiver position. Losing Geno Stone to a division rival isn't good. So, you know, uh, I think there were other I, I think the Derrick Henry move was good enough that I'm still saying this is like a solid offseason for like again, every team gets better. So like a C doesn't necessarily mean like you didn't get better or worse. It just means you only you didn't get better a ton in my book. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I think I think having Derrick Henry in January is going to be a lot more impactful for this team. than The ceiling is has. A plus. I'll definitely say yes. that. Yeah. And I think that's where, that's where I have the grade. That's where I have the grade at is because I think this was a team that was so close. We mm-hmm. talked about that game and you know, the mishaps in that game. I think Derrick Henry might push them over the, you know, Derrick Henry on this team, I think pushes them past what K- Kansas city was last year. Is Kansas City going to be better than last year? We'll see. But I think that pushes them past Kansas City last year. I kind of think the Ravens are better than Kansas City last year also. But, uh, you yes. know, uh, uh, let's move on. Let's stick with the division. Go to the Browns, uh, who had a, a unique offseason. So they traded for Jerry Judy, and they gave him an extension, which uh, was actually kind of confusing. So the extension initially was reported a three-year, like, uh, $60 million extension. But that's actually including the $13 million they owe him for this next year. So it's essentially a four-year uh, $60 million extension. And uh, some of those, some of that is a little bit of that is incentives. So it's actually not quite as bad as it, uh, it seemed like when it reported. Added James Winston. Uh, also added Tyler Huntley. So they're paying attention to that backup position, which they they needed a lot last year. Um, re-signed Zedaria Smith, which is uh, a good move. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think a, a, a solid offseason for the Browns. I, I am going with a C here as well. Okay, yeah, I had B. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot. I do think they needed another receiver, and 
is it still probably an overpay for Jerry Judy? Absolutely. Like I, mm-hmm. I think it could be, but I also think he is, you know, a position of need for this team, right? They needed a second receiver option. And I mean, he's just frankly better than um, Elijah Moore, Cedric Tillman, Donovan Peoples Jones, the guys they had last year. So I do think that's just going to help. So, you know, you're already, you're already making this team better with that, having him on this team, Zadarius Smith, like you said, and, I just think it's going to be a really good team. And this this is another, you know, it's a similar thing to what I said where, or what we were talking about with the, um, you know, with the Bills and the, the Jets. Like, is this team better now or are they not? And I think this team's better. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think that's totally reasonable. The backup quarterback situation is interesting. Not keeping Flacco. It's, oh, come on. You got to keep Flacco. What are you doing? Uh, but I, I don't know. How do we feel about Jameis here? Because I, I do think... The Jameis Winston signing is a, hey, we don't know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, I I, I haven't obviously been the biggest big, uh, Jameis fan. Um, and I have I been the biggest Jameis fan. I have been yeah, number one. I think I think that kind of goes without saying. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, he should be, he should be an okay backup, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. It, this season still, once again, comes down to Watson because as fun as that Cleveland team was last season and as good as they were in the regular season, nobody was picking them to win the Super Bowl with Joe Flacco. Not realistically. You know, I think right. we were having fun with the Joe Flacco experience, but, you know, this this team needs at least solid quarterback play, and they just haven't gotten it from the guy they paid $250 million guaranteed. So that that's going to be the biggest question with this team to whether they actually can reach their aspirations or not. I also have to say, people were saying the Browns were going to win the Super Bowl last year. That's why I got in a fight with the, all the Browns fans, because they were like, oh, no, our def- defense wins championships. It was a thing. Well, fans and now, are... And now I say no, they're not. They get knocked out round one, and everyone said, ah, we knew they weren't going to be good. I never get credit, Kyle. Fan, well, fans are, you know, reactionary. I don't know. They... <laughs> There, there was no way that team was winning the Super Bowl with Joe Flacco. I, I, I agree. Picked them that's to that's beat what the I was Texans. saying. Everyone was yeah. mad at me. I picked them to beat the Texans or whatever it was, but you know, I don't. I wouldn't have picked them beyond that. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you're you're right though. Everything you're saying is correct. Let's move on. Let's go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Who, Kyle? I have to warn you. If you say one negative thing, they will be mad at you. The Steelers fans will be upset. Are, are Steelers fans sensitive? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely not. Steelers fans, best best in the world, and no negative things whatsoever to say about them. They're the best. Steelers are awesome. No notes. So you have an A then. <laughs> I have a I have a B here. I have a B. Okay. I did not love giving away Deontay Johnson for very little value in return. I like the Patrick Queen signing, uh, as I've mentioned. And I think getting Fields and Wilson is a smart. I think those are two two good moves. Uh I left them off my top seven uh winners uh of the offseason list, and Steelers fans very upset. Um, yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I also have as a B, like I said, I think this is, I think the Patrick Queen thing is more additive for Pittsburgh than it is subtractive for Baltimore. Cause I think this team had a need at linebacker and I don't think Baltimore had a need at linebacker. So I think it makes sense to get a guy like that. Um, I agree with you on the Deontay Johnson thing. I don't understand why they got rid of him. Now, if they end up getting Brandon Ayuk, that might be okay. Sure. Like, uh, yeah. That is but, a yeah, but that still has to happen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just because there's social media posts, that doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah, I, I we'll we'll see about that. And then, like, I don't love either of their quarterbacks they got, but it's good value, so I get it. So you know, I'll say a B for that. They have two. They have two options that they can go to for starting quarterback, and you know, you could say they had none before the season off season. Yeah, listen, out of all the quarterbacks that nobody wanted. The, the top two were probably Fields and Wilson, and they got them both. And all they had to spend was a yeah, you know, six six round pick that could become a fourth, and uh, basically nothing for Russell Wilson. Now Fields is getting, you know, one thing that I keep bringing up: Fields is getting paid a little bit of money because he was a first round pick. So like, it's not like he's getting paid nothing, but uh, still, it's you know, you're not giving up a ton for for that. It's an interesting interesting flyer. Like, I do think the Steelers could be. I, I, Again, I like the offseason. Uh, I like what they did. I think those are two smart moves. I also like getting uh, Deshaun Elliott. I think that's an interesting move as well, kind of a, a flyer there. Even like Van Jefferson. Like, I don't know. That's a, that's a fun flyer. Let's see, see what he does. So, yeah, as a whole, uh, you know, an interesting move. Yeah, and they're going to draft a stud receiver too anyway. So, you know, it, it happens every year. Um, how funny is it that we kept saying we wanted to see Justin Fields in an Arthur Smith-style offense? 
And then it just happens in Pittsburgh instead of Atlanta. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is that is that is pretty good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Steelers should be should be really exciting next year. Does Justin Fields play next year? Not because of injury. Um. Uh, so I made a video on who I would have play. I would go with Fields. I don't think there's a big jump between Fields or Wilson, and I would go with the younger guy. I think it would too, and I don't even like Fields that much. Right. Like. I don't know. Like, I, I still think Russell Wilson's fine, but is getting the 16th best quarterback play worth over getting the 24th best quarterback play when the 24th best quarterback could end up being like a top 10 guy still? Like, yeah. I think that's and, and the question other, I juggle in my head. And my other argument, too, is like, with, with feet, like, I don't think the situation's looking that great right now, like with the receiving core and the offensive line. Like, so getting a guy, I feel Fields might be better in this spot. I, I think what I would really do is try to improve the offense and then put Wilson in. But like, if we're not doing that, I kind of trust Fields in a bad spot more than Wilson at this point in his career. Well, that's the big thing about trading DeAndre, Deontay Johnson, right? Like, you had a guy that was a real number two receiver. Um, And that just doesn't make sense to me why they would get rid of him in that spot. So, uh, like I said, maybe maybe they have something up their sleeve for that one. There's been a lot of rumors about that. I could see this offensive line getting a little bit better. Like I, I still like Broderick Jones as a rookie. Um, uh, Samalo, I think, could be better in year two. I don't know. We'll see. But, you know, I do think they need to make some adjustments on offense for sure. Yeah, it uh, should be interesting. Just to clarify, my Steelers think the Steelers, uh, have, they ha Steelers have the best fans in the world. They also have the worst fans in the world. There's a lot of fan bases like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's when you, I mean, when you're one of the, the like, it's like Toronto, right? Like uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, like they have great fans and then they have the worst. You'll meet, like, it's just like when you have a fan base that big, you're going to get a, you know, you, there's great Yankees fans and then horrible Yankees fans, whatever the biggest fan base is, you're going to get a lot of, you know, a, a, a lot of annoying people uh, that root for your team. Yeah. The Maple Leafs are just bitter though. Like it's yeah. not my fault. You never win anything like, right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're they're just the worst. Uh, they they don't have the best fans. They just have the worst. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Listen, got to win a Stanley Cup, man. Got to break Canada's streak. I, I think so. Uh, I mean, hopefully not this year. Uh, with uh, you know, our, our team's looking good all of a sudden. Lightning. Well, your team's kind of sputtering a little. We're okay. It, it's so bizarre. We're not that good of a team, but we we keep losing in overtime, so that keeps us in first place. Um, but. We, we can't score goals outside of Pasternak, so we'll see. Maybe we'll do a quick hockey corner at the end. Uh, let's keep going. Let's go finish up this division with the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, who the T. Higgins thing is, so so far he's still on the team, so I'm not going to, you know, not going to factor that in. I liked adding Geno uh, Stone to the, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think that's an interesting move. Uh, you know, they didn't, does Mike get anything left? I don't know. They got rid of Joe Mixon. Uh, which I don't know if they had to. Uh, kind of an odd move there. This is another. This is the C for me right now, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I I was kind of le like if I were to do a grade, this would probably be a C plus ish for me. Um, you know, if I were to add the plus minus for this team, you know, I I think like getting a guy like Trent Brown, they have the largest tackle room in football with Orlando Brown and Trent Brown. Like that mm -hmm. is just. Uh, large Browns, uh, speaking of the last name, not skin color. Um, you know, uh, I, I think this is a still going to be a pretty good team. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they just keep T Higgins and say, you know, just play one more year and then you can go sign wherever you want, honestly. Um, bring back Von Bell, you know, that kind of stuff. And I, I, I think they're going to be okay. I, th I still think they're going to be really good. And, um, you know, the, the Mixon thing was the only thing that was really weird, but I'm also, like, not too upset about it because, you know, Zach Moss was pretty good last year, too, when he was in his, uh, when he was uh, starting. First off, I missed this earlier. Sorry. Uh, I am, J J Joe says, I am the best of the Giants fans and wants to shout out. Yes, Joe, you are the best of, just any fan. Uh, best fan is Joe. Um, Kyle, I'm surprised you didn't go F- minus because your guy, DJ Reader, uh, walked. That's lost Chidobe Awuze. So they lost pieces. They didn't replace, you know, mm -hmm. they got Sheldon Rankins, uh, Got Geno Stone, who isn't uh, a corner, but you know, like there, I do think they got marginally. They took a step back and could take a massive step back of losing T. Higgins. Uh, 
Potentially, yeah. If they do lose T. Higgins, this would go down for me. This would probably be closer to a D. But, you know, depending on how that goes, I, I still think, like, you know, they loaded up at safety and lost positions at corner. I don't know about that strategy, but it could work. Um, you know, it could be something that's interesting. Um, but, yeah, I, I still think, like, the key of this defense is still going to be Hendrickson, Hubbard, uh, all these pieces they have in the secondary. I still think are pretty good. And I still think they're going to be all right in that regard. Yeah, should be uh should be interesting. Hey, they went to a Super Bowl with Eli Apple at corner because they had good safeties. That 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 they did, and they got good safeties again. Yeah. Also, they maybe lost that Super Bowl because of Eli Apple, but that's besides the point. Uh, you know, they, they can at least win some games that way. Let's go to the team that got Joe Mixon, the Houston Texans. Uh, you know, added Joe Mixon for a year, which the move I I think was smart. Uh, they've been busy. Uh, Texans have been busy with a lot of interesting moves. They added uh. Daniel Hunter, kind of one of their big, you know, that's kind of their big signing. Kyle, uh, what, what's your thoughts? What's your grade on the Texans? Yeah, I gave it an A. I think this team's better. Like, I, I thought there was an opportunity this offseason for the Texans to go in and kind of build around their rookie quarterback and load up this roster, and I think they did. I think, you know, guys like, you know, I think Daniel Hunter is going to be really good with Will Anderson. I think guys like, you know, Danico Autry is going to be pretty good. I think Al Shair back with – um D'Amico Ryan is going to be pretty good. I think this defense just with that front seven getting better is going to get better because that was probably the weakest part of their team last year. Um, although they do lose Grenard, who I do like, but I still think they're going to be okay there. Um, you know, I think that they got guys like Joe Mixon to help this offense because they couldn't run the ball at all. Um, so yeah, I think they got better and I think that they're really good. And, you know, this wouldn't be, it wouldn't be surprising if another CJ Stroud leap this is a Super Bowl contender next year. So I'll go A. What's that thing of like uh, the riddle of if you get a boat and you replace one plank of wood of the boat, uh, you know, every day you've replaced one plank and at a certain point all the planks have been replaced. Is that still the same boat or is it a different boat? That's kind of how I feel with the Texans right now. Yeah. Newer is always better. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Kyle, uh, so Provable Focus has like the top 200 players, 200 free agents. And uh, if you sort by team, it'll have whether it, they left your team or still on your team. So uh, the Texans have 15 players that either joined their team or left their team that were on the top 200. Uh, they, again, very busy. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of moving parts here. And some of those guys could still be re-signed, but still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of moving parts, but like, I still think even as this team overperformed last year, there was a lot of dead weight, right? Like, it's okay to say, mm -hmm. like, there was still some really bad parts of this team. It was just kind of, you know, uh, the good parts of this team really lifted this team up, I thought. So I still think like their receivers are still good. And, you know, they brought back the guys and, you know, they have that. And I think adding to the running game, I think all that's going to help. I guess the one thing you could have said, like, they could have got a little more aggressive at the offensive line spot, but like, Maybe they maybe they hit on that in the draft. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I, I wouldn't be. I'm not maybe quite as. Again, it's kind of one of those things where like you had a lot of cat space. You should have gotten better. They did get better. So like, and, and I am with you. Like, I mean, uh, if Gardner Minshew throws that pass a little bit further, uh, you know, on fourth down, like the Texans probably aren't in the playoffs. Like they they mm -hmm. they, they just were able to make in, and they did a great job once they got there. But like, yeah, I, I think the Blake Cashman signing was a real kind of underrated. Uh, piece, you know, they did loot. They lost guys. You brought up Bernard. Uh, the, the, you know, they uh, lost Sheldon rankings. I'm not sure exactly how I feel like Autry or Aziz Al Shear, uh, but they aren't like massive deals. So I'm not like overly concerned. I thought the Dalton Schultz uh, re signing was, uh, you know, good. I think that was, that was a good job. So I'd still like to see them bring Steven Nelson back personally. But and I think Daniel Hunter should be really good for them. So yeah, yeah. Uh, as a whole, they got better. Yeah, I mean, if you just looked at it, I mean, it almost isn't in a vacuum. It feels like a lot of it's a wash, and then Joe Mixon and Daniel Hunter for Jonathan Grenard, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I view it. Like, that's that's what they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in interesting off season with them. Let's move on. Why don't we? Let's go to the Jaguars, who had another very fascinating off season as they, you know, uh, they lost uh, Calvin Ridley, who they had traded for in the past. So that was kind of their biggest. A notable move. They did add Gabe Davis to kind of replace that. Apparently, they, I think they kind of wanted Calvin Ridley, but weren't going to give him the deal that Tennessee gave him. Uh, they did franchise tag Josh Allen, which is kind of the big one. 
Um, you know, I think keeping uh, Ertz to Cleveland, who they traded for, was a good move. I'm not sure what I'm expecting out of Darnell Savage, but it's two and a half million a year. Uh, I do like the, you know, taking a flyer on Ronald Darby, I think is interesting. But, uh, you know, I don't know. This is, uh, maybe it's just too negative. I'm going to go a D here, though. I, th- I think they needed to get better, and they haven't really done that. Uh, I'm with you, actually, on this one. I have a D as well. I don't think this team is still all that great on the offensive line. Uh, I know they got Mitch Morris. Mitch Morris is okay to me. Um, He's pretty good. You know, I think that'll help a little bit, but not enough for me to really get moved by this offensive line, which I think did need some help going into the offseason. And, you know, they weren't that good at receiver last year. I mean, it was just straight up. Like, you know, Calvin Ridley was not, like, an elite level receiver, which they were kind of, I think, hoping for. And mm-hmm. then they just didn't really have any of those other guys develop. And then they, they solved it by not wanting to pay Calvin Ridley, which I can kind of understand, but then you, your, your solution is Gabe Davis and Devin Duvernay, which I also don't think is the solution to that either. So this is another season where it feels like Jacksonville is not going to be good at receiver and not going to be good at offensive line. And we're going to ask Trevor Lawrence to try and make this work again. So I'm not overly enthused by that. I do like Aaron Armstead a lot. I do like him and bringing Josh Allen back. That obviously makes sense. I, I do agree with you. Darby is a interesting player, but I thought Darius Williams was really good for them too last year. Yeah. And they lost that. So I think that's still a downgrade. So I'm with you. It's a D for me. The Eric Armstead one is one I like a lot, though, especially with the whole Trayvon Walker question of can he finally kind of have that breakout year? Year three is usually one. Those kind of physical freaks ha- either make or break. Uh, getting guy like Eric Armstead to be a good pass rusher from the inside kind of just makes perfect sense because it's a way where you don't have to put all your eggs in the Trayvon Walker basket while at the same time not moving off of him either. So I thought that was smart. Yeah, they've spent enough on edge rushers, right? Yeah, I think they finally said like, "Hey, why don't we just get an inside guy?" Yeah, kind of a kind of a well done there by uh, the Jaguars. Uh, the Colts. I mean, we're gonna have to spend you know three or four hours on the Colts, Kyle, with all they've been up to. <laughs> they signed two guys, and one of them's Joe Flacco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incredible. And they gave him like nine million, which I'm not exactly sure why they did that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. See, I guess they brought back their guys. They didn't yeah. pay, spend a lot of money. I mean, it's it's typical Colts. There's nothing to talk about. Next yeah, next episode. I guess the one thing you could say is like, should they have kept Gardner Minshew? Especially when Gardner Minshew kind of got a similar uh, per year at what Flacco was getting. At that point, maybe just keep, if you're going to give Flacco $9 million, might as well give Gardner, you know, you have to pay him an extra couple million to keep him on the roster. Maybe Gardner wanted a, sh- a chance to compete for a starter. So who knows? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what it is. Like, I, I'm sure they would have liked to keep Gardner, but, yeah. you know, they, they can't offer the same opportunity, which is, is what it is. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. All right, well, sorry, Colts fans, but really, uh, if you're a Colts fan, I mean, you do not pay attention to football uh, until the draft, right? Yeah, you weren't anticipating these shows being interesting for you anyways. <laughs> you're right. I, I, so, uh, let's go to the Titans. We brought them up earlier with the Calvin Ridley uh, thing, which is, you know... Uh, so the Calvin Ridley thing is interesting. A lot of people have kind of criticized the Calvin Ridley decision saying that like, you know, it is a lot of money and it is, they, they paid him a lot of money, but I don't know. They needed a receiver. Like he's a good receiver for them. I get it. It's a lot. I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not going to crush just, uh, it's a weird free agency period for them, but I'm still going to go see. Yeah. I, I wouldn't see too. I don't really get their plan. Like, mm-hmm. like I actually think a lot of the players they got are good. Right. Like, Uh I think Mason Rudolph is a good backup quarterback. And I mean, he might be the best quarterback on this roster. So we'll see how it's possible. It is possible. Um, We'll see. I'm giving Will Levis a chance. I got to be nice. But yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, I like him. I like Lloyd Cushenberry. I like Tony Pollard a bit. Um, I I like Shadobi Awuzie when he's healthy. I like Calvin Ridley a little bit. But like, I don't know, like what 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 is what is the end game here? You know, what is this team doing? Like, I I just don't see, I don't see the vision for this team. I need to see this team on the field next year because I don't see the vision. I want to, I want this explained to me on the field because I just have no, like we're going to do our AFC South preview here in July or whatever. And I'm just going to say, I have no idea what to pick of this, what to think of this team. Like, I think it's going to be bad because I mentioned the whole, like I've done it multiple times on this podcast. This is a whole identity shift, your whole identity on offense, especially with Derrick Henry. And I think it's a huge turnaround to do this. 
So I just need to see it. And I can't continue to say, I have no idea what to think of this team. So, you know, they made a bunch of moves and I think a lot of their players are good. Did they pay overpay some of those guys to make sure they came in the building? Yes, but they're still pretty good players. So I'll go see. Kind of feels like they're, I guess, building around Levis, which isn't a terrible strategy, right? But like, yeah, I, I'm with you. It's, it's, it's still weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, that, I, I do think it's building around Levis, but it's like, is Calvin Ridley and, you know, Travion, uh, what's it, Travion Burks? You know, is that going to be... Traylon Burks. A, Traylon Burks, that's right. You know, Traylon Hawkins. Burks. Yeah, that too. So, I mean, I don't know. Is that enough to really move the needle, I guess? I mean, Hopkins is still pretty good. So, yeah, and then mm-hmm. $8 million a year for Tony Pollard. Is that enough to rep- replicate Derrick Henry? I don't think that's going to be, you know, close to what Derrick Henry is. So, I just... I have some questions. Yeah. And also, I mean, you know, uh, what's kind of crazy, Calvin Ridley is another one of those guys. Like, he's 29. He feels like he should be at 25. Uh, but, you know, so that's kind of the thing as well of you have to, you know, uh, he, he he's not going to be around forever, but it does feel like they're going to give Will Levis a shot. I think what they're doing is let's give Will Levis a shot. If it doesn't work, probably won't. Then we'll go out and get another guy. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the plan. And they did that with Malik Willis, and you know they kind of in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, should should be interesting. Let's let's move on. Let's go to Kyle Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs always an interesting, you know, a free agency period with them. Uh, what what do you think they did? Uh, what what grade would you give them? Uh, Kansas City. I got to pull up the roster here real quick. So, um, yeah, I think. This was a B. If I were going to do the plus minus thing, this would probably be closer to a B plus for me. Um, you know, I think, you know, <laughs> I, I've said a lot about Hollywood Brown, I feel like, on this podcast. I think Hollywood Brown is a lot better than anything they had last year at receiver. So that is that is an upgrade to me and only on a one year flyer deal. So I think that's pretty good. I think that they helped their defense. They brought back the key guys. Legeria Sneed obviously was the priority here. So yeah, this is a B B plus ish for me as well because I, I think they did, I did they did a good job. They did the right moves. I'm even higher than you. I have an A here uh for the Chiefs. In fact, they made my uh, seven winners video because I first first off, I factor in re-signings and getting Chris Jones back in the building. And so far, Legeria Sneed is still here. Maybe they'll trade him, but then you're getting value back for him at least. Well, I wouldn't trade him. I think that, you know, get is Wood Booge. And yeah, the Marquise Brown, uh, 11 million for Marquise Brown. Like, the, the, the Marquise Brown issue has always been that like teams keep overvaluing him, right? The Ravens drafted him mm-hmm. in the first round, probably shouldn't have been a first rounder. I mean, at the time, I felt fine, but you know, in hindsight, shouldn't have been a first round. Uh, and then the Cardinals made like kind of an underrated one of the dumbest trades in the past five years, right? Trading a first round pick for, for two years of Marquise Brown uh, wasn't smart. Uh, so uh, a one-year deal for $11 million. It, It's kind of smart sides too, right, Marquise Brown? Because like, I don't get why more guys don't do this. Like, If you don't get the contract you want, to get, take, take a one-year deal with a team that's going to put you in a good position, and then you'll get like a Juju Smith-Schuster contract the next year probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, go play with Patrick Mahomes for a year and you know, just yeah. amplify your value. So I, I, I think... Why not? Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense for uh, for them. Makes a lot of sense for Kansas City. Makes a lot of sense for Brown. And I mean, they still might end up with a guy like Juju Smith Schuster, who uh, might still get cut by the Patriots, and you know, bring him back. So I, I still think they can add to this receiving core. And you know, uh, do they? Did do I think they need still a higher level guy potentially? But I still think this is really good for them, and I think it's going to be a huge step forward. And I still imagine a lot of the issues we saw with their offense last year should be justified with this with this move. So yeah, I think that you know the the Super Bowl champs got better, and that's always a good thing. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, and like Hollywood Brown. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Could still use a tackle. Yeah. I still like who's who's left tackle right now. Um, they're gonna draft one, right? I, I guess, but like, that is a con- a concern, right? Like, that's that, that's the one. I gave it an A. It's a great uh, great off season. I'm just saying that's the one thing they still have to pay attention to. Yeah, and it's not like their pick position is going to be guaranteed starter at left tackle. So we'll right. see. I mean, there's still opportunities there as well. You know, someone could get cut. We'll see. But you know, it does look like that is probably the last thing on their uh, last thing on their to do list for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could bring back Donovan Smith, but I don't know if that's what you want to do. 
Uh, I wouldn't, but you know, it worked out for them last year. Thomas just somehow took a one year, two and a half. He took the prove it year, uh, deal and it, it didn't work out. He won a Super Bowl, so I guess he's happy. But uh, that, that's, you know, maybe for tackle, maybe that's not quite the one year prove it deal you want to, not quite the place you want to go to. D- Two time Super Bowl champ, Donovan Smith, respect the name. Incredible, incredible stuff by Donovan Smith. Let's move on. The Las Vegas Raiders uh, are next on the list as at a. You know, again, another busy offseason. They added Gardner Minshew. Uh, they added Christian Wilkins to a, a huge uh, deal, you know, $27.5 million a year deal for four years. They lost Josh Jacobs, who, you know, uh, losing a halfback in free agency, not the worst thing in the world, did resign, uh, you know, uh, Andre James uh, at center. So they had an, an interesting, you know, offseason uh, here. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go C here, Kyle. I'm giving C is basically every team, but I think C feels right. Yeah, I think that's okay. Like I I feel like it could work look worse during the season because I wouldn't be shocked if Josh Jacobs is awesome in Green Bay. Um, but like I don't think it's that like problematic, I think, overall for Las Vegas. So I'm okay with that. And, you know, I think Wilkins is a really good player and I think he's a menace and he and Max Crosby are probably the meanest defensive line in football. So I'm looking forward to watching that. That is going to be appointment viewing, I think, for me as far as Sunday ticket. So I'm looking forward to those two. And, I mean, quite frankly, I think Gardner Minshew is their best quarterback, and it's not close. So, you know, I think that they got upgraded quarterback. They got upgraded a premium position with a premium player. I think those both definitely help. I don't know how much it moves the needle for me, though. So I'll say, you know, this is another one. If I were to do a letter, it or if I were to probably do a plus minus thing, this would probably be closer to C plus B minus, but I'll just say C because I think it's close to that. Yeah. I mean, and again, uh, you know how I feel about giving a, a defensive lineman, you know, 27 million a year. Wilkins, if you're going to give a guy that kind of money is, is one of the guys you should give it to. Like he is, he is, I, I get it. I'm just kind of a little This team more... is also so bad at it besides Max Crosby, right? Yeah, like... you're right. I, I totally <laughs> understand it. And, and again, you, the, the mindset, the mentality, the whole, like what they're trying to do, like that, that, that factors in. I get it. It's just not the move I would have made personally, but I can't really criticize them for they, just, they fundamentally want to build their team different than how I would try and build a team. Yeah. Yeah. So it it is definitely a different strategy, but I also think they were so bad in the front seven outside of Crosby. They definitely needed a premium player, and I think that's going to help. I guess the only other critique you could put for the Raiders is like they're kind of doing this thing, like they did this last year too, where like they're they're refusing to do a rebuild, right? They're consistently like at a certain point, what time do they say, you know what, let's just uh, blow it up? Not even blow it up, but just like let's just kind of try to build for the future a little bit more. They could. <laughs> Uh, what pick do they have this year? Uh, I, I, I'll, I can look it up, but it's, it's not, not a super high pick because they were decent lot. Uh, I'll check. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a conversation to be had on, should this team, should this team go quarterback again? Should they, you know, are, yeah, is that 13, their priority? Right? Yeah. Is that, should that be the priority? Like, you know, I don't know if it should be an Aiden O'Connell situation. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I made a video of like, should to start a lot of Raiders think they should draft a guy. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hate the idea of what the Patriots did of Mac Jones. Now Mac Jones didn't really work out, but like uh, you know, just there's a lot of good quarterbacks. At 13, get that guy. Maybe you could even do like a slight trade up where you don't have to give up like future first round picks, but I don't know. Uh trade with Atlanta, who's at number eight, and get like a you know, get a a, a decent quarterback. Like I wouldn't hate that. Could see if JJ McCarthy's there at 13. Could yeah, potentially sure. reach for Michael Penix. You could wait. I don't know. We'll see. It, it is an interesting conversation for the Raiders. I do think they need to draft a quarterback. Yeah, I, I think I, I probably... Let's move on. Two's left. The Denver Broncos. Talk about teams that are busy. Uh, well, I guess they've made a decent amount of moves. I don't know if I would say that they're uh, 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 overly busy. And that, actually, uh, uh, little, little Jordan Humphrey re-signed. Uh, Sean Payton loves little Jordan Humphrey. <laughs> they did they did get willow jordan humphrey uh this is an f for me man um okay mm-hmm. f yeah I, they're worse and maybe this team needs to be worse so maybe it's okay but they're paying a quarterback 40 plus million dollars to not play for their team they released probably their best defensive player individually um they traded one receiver now did they you know was it t- ne- was it necessary you know 
I don't think he moved the needle all that much. They still might move Cortland Sutton too. So, you know, I think this team's going to be bad. It seems like this is a rebuild. So I guess if you're saying their goal is to rebuild, this is probably a B or an A because they're doing that. Um, but this team's going to be bad next year. If you're if you're going off of grades of is this team better or worse, this team's much worse. So that's where my F is. Yeah, uh, I, I understand. Also, I just realized I forgot to plug in my internet thing, so that's why I'm so. Uh, it's let's looking so. I just I, I have it all set up. I just forgot to plug that the cord in. Um, you know, so my bad on that. But uh, yeah, the um, uh, I, Kyle, here's my question: What would you? What's the quarterback situation looking like in the draft next year? Next year? Yeah, not this upcoming draft. Uh, draft now. You're the college guy. Yeah, let me take let me think about it for a second. Um, well, obviously there's Quinn Ewers at Texas who has is had there some a good quarterback coming out? Um, let me take a look. I, I would have to research this. So do your do your Broncos thing while I look this up. I need a refresher real quick. Okay. Well, I was, I was hoping you had it. I think if, if there is a good quarterback, my it's a it's a B for me. If there isn't, this is a D because uh this I mean this feels like a tank move. I, I think they're tanking. I think it's fine to tank. Tank is probably the right strategy. So I'm I'm not gonna crush them for it. I get what you're saying yeah. about the F because like yeah, they're in a ter- ter- terrible spot. But again, that feels like kind of the crimes of years past that they're now just having to pay for here. Yeah. The first mock draft I pulled up said Shador Sanders is the number one player in the draft. And, you know, I, I kind of like Shador. I don't know if I love that as the uh, number one pick. So, um, okay. Well, then, then send us a D. Bad, bad year to bad year to tank. Yeah. I mean, he might be okay. We'll see how he does in another year. Um, he takes a ton of hits, but I like him. I like him a little bit. I like Quinn Ewers. Um, there's a couple other guys I think on the come up too that might be pretty good and uh, some newcomers this next year that I think could be pretty good. Uh, watch out for Garrett Nussmeyer at LSU. That's my call. Okay, gotcha. Uh, any other moves to talk about? Not really, right? The Jerry Jerry Judy one. Uh, I get he got a contract extension and all that. I don't know. It feels like kind of a uh, might as well have kept him. But I, I guess again they're trying to tank, so I, I can't really criticize it. I, I get what they're doing. Sometimes tanking isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah, that's what I agree. Like, this is definitely a blow it up situation. So I get it. But I still think it's a I still think like if, if I'm doing this grades on is this team better or worse, this seems much, much worse. Right? Yeah, definitely. It, it's 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 almost an intentional F. Yeah. Um. So it is what it is. We'll see. We'll see how they do. Yeah, let's move on to the chargers kyle this is an f for me this is an f minus if you will i did not like this this uh this chargers free agency period of getting rid of both mike williams and keenan allen uh i get they Mm kind of have to blow things up as well by that point get rid of khalil mack i think personally like he's he's getting up there in age um and what concerns me as well is harbaugh kind of made the comment of we got to get back to running running the football like running the football (laughs) like no, no, you have Justin Herbert. That should not be how you're trying to com- construct this team. They also lost like Gerald Everett, who I think is like pretty good. They like, lost Austin Eckler. Like, you know, they added Gus Edwards, I suppose. But like, poor, poor Justin Herbert. I, you think it's finally going to get better. And then look at, they've completely gutted this. And I, they're probably going to draft the guy. I get it. But for free agency, like, I did not like this free agency at all by the Chargers. Uh, I agree with you. Um, this was another F for me. Like, I understand they needed to get rid of some of the dead weight, but Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to me were not the dead weight. <laughs> like, um, yeah. you know, they needed to fix this financial situation. So I agree with it, but I, I do think that they could have gone in a different direction to do that. And, you know, it's really fascinating because, you know, you said you've done your evaluations. There was a lot of JJ McCarthy conversation. Um, it feels like mm-hmm. right now when it comes to draft coverage and, it's so funny to me because this guy was, you know, he was the superstar among superstars as far as high school prospects. He had the arm. He has the arm strength. He has the arm talent. He's incredibly mobile. He's an incredible athlete. And, like, I, I don't love him as a prospect. I think he's okay. But I also wonder how much of it had to do with playing in Jim Harbaugh's offense, which is kind of old school. And mm-hmm. it seems like they're going in that direction. And. You know, there's a lot of things I like about Jim Harbaugh, the head coach. His offensive scheme is not one of them. So uh, I'm going to be very interested and see what happens this Charger season. So I'm fascinated in this offseason and, uh, you know, what they do around Herbert this year. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm with you. And I think that, again, kind of the run heavy offense works better in college than the pros, uh, which we kind of know. It's a they're just a weird it's a weird situation. They have to go through a rebuild, I suppose. For a second, I thought you were going to go 
the the do the uh, JJ McCarthy to the Chargers uh, pick, and I was gonna go crazy. Uh, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> I could see them drafting Blake Corum in the first round. How funny would that be? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it would be. Uh, there, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what they do. I think that they'll be a fine eventually. I just don't love that. It, at a certain point, Herbert's going to leave. You gotta you can't, you can't just completely neglect him. Yeah, they could trade Herbert for three. <laughs> I I suppose. Okay, yeah, you you would you'd be okay about you would you would take that deal. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I I would say yes. I would. Okay, okay. Well, there there's an option on the table. Uh, uh, what this is? Would you uh, tr- guys trade Herbert for the first pick? That's an interesting one, Kyle. First overall pick or Herbert? I would take Caleb long term. You would take Caleb? Yeah. Wow, that's a. Uh, I think if I'm the Bears, I'm saying yes in an instant. I'm not even hesitating. Uh, if I'm getting Herbert, <laughs> I'm irrational. I, yeah, that's I an, am... that's an insane. I mean, Her- Herbert is what like a, the seventh best quarterback in football. Maybe yeah, but I that? might have. I might have the third best quarterback, second best quarterback in football for the next decade. You might also deal. have a, a guy who doesn't who is out of league in three years. So you don't know. He's a complete unknown. Yeah, I don't know. I'm irrational. I I I, I think Caleb's probably the third best asset in the NFL right now. Third. So is it? Who are the Who are the top two? Is it Mahomes, Mahomes and, and Josh, Josh Allen. Allen? So you'd rather have. Yeah. So you would trade Joe Burrow for Caleb Williams. I would consider it. I'd have a meeting. <laughs> oh my God, Kyle, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think Caleb's that good. I think he's that much of a difference maker. So I'll, 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 I'll look stupid. It's okay. Um, if it's <laughs> okay. wrong, but Listen, uh, I, Caleb Williams, great prospect. I'm not saying like, I don't think, like, I think absolutely. He's, you know, if you would do it, were to do it for any prospect, he'd be the guy. I just think, I don't know. I'd rather take, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson, the two time MVP winner. I think I would take him first. Yeah, he's probably fourth in my asset pool. But <laughs> okay, gotcha. I don't know. Okay. I just think Caleb's that special. I really do. You know, I think I think the people who are trying to nitpick Caleb are mad that he couldn't score forty five points a game in college, which is ridiculous. So I, I think he's that special. Listen, I think Caleb Williams is a great prospect. All I'm saying is, you know, uh, Trevor Lawrence was a special prospect. Uh, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, hasn't necessarily been a number one overall pick, uh, or hasn't necessarily been like a top like five quarterback. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I think he's a better prospect, though. I'm, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree, but I'm just, I'm just. Who knows? We'll, we'll see how it works out. Uh, but yeah, uh, well, little preview as you know what? Because Kyle, I'm, I'm looking at the schedule. So uh, next week we'll do our NFC as we, uh, you know, our NFC uh, free agency recap, and if there's any big moves in the AFC, we'll talk about those as well. Uh, and then uh, we have four shows left until the uh, draft, so that means basically. We usually do four uh, pre-draft shows, so like our our next month or so is we've already we already know what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, we're all set on shows, so uh, make sure to tune in. Make sure to uh, you know listen whether live or you know on your podcast feed on the sideline podcast, and uh, it's gonna be good stuff. Uh, you know that little draft tidbit that's just gonna be a little taste of what you get for the next month. Oh man, we're I'm so ready to argue about every little thing and then be wrong about all of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you could probably miss the receivers edition. <laughs> yeah, you could fast forward past <laughs> that one, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, so like as Kyle mentioned, anywhere you get your podcast, search on the sideline podcast, it should be available. Uh, next week, we're doing the NFC edition of free agency. The week after, we'll do our quarterback top 10 quarterbacks uh, of the draft. Uh, then the following week, we'll do our top offensive players. Week after, top defensive players. Week after that, the mock draft. So if you're making plans for um, over a month from now, we got you covered. Um, and then we have the draft, all that fun stuff. Kyle, let me know you can find us on Twitter before we head out. Yeah, make sure to follow us on Twitter. That is at Jackson Kruger. Make sure to follow me at by Kyle Gron. And make sure to follow the account page at on the sideline JK. That is at on the sideline JK. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, the lightning been, been winning nonstop. You're on a roll. Yeah, it's a good You're going to be stop. in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, Anthony declares he scored, uh, you know, uh, had a point in every game since since coming over in the trade deadline, three goals in four games. We're back. So you're basically a lock in, right? Not a lock, but we're, we're in a good spot. Uh, we could still because right now the the best team that's not in a wildcard spot would be the Capitals. And they're five points back uh, of us. They do have a game in hand. So it's not like a lock. 
but also we're the wild card one. So both the Red Wings and the Capitals would have to jump us. So I, I feel pretty good, especially when we're, we play. We're on the West Coast right now, so we, I think we play the Sharks and the Ducks the next two games. So uh, feels feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you're in a good spot. I think you're in. Uh, Shark should be an easy win. Um, so yeah, I, well, you know, it's been a fun season. We'll see how it goes. I uh, I don't really know how I feel about it yet. I just don't want what I don't want is to uh, get the number three seed because having to play the Panthers and then the Bruins like like no thank or Bruins then Panthers I don't want anything to do with that uh, I don't know Bruins are interesting I, I'm fascinated in seeing how they'll do it's just it's a team like last year's team obviously is kind of you know a different story that team was ridiculous but like last year's team they lost Patrice Bergeron David Krejci Taylor Hall. Um, mm-hmm. Tyler Bertuzzi, <laughs> like yeah, but they got uh, all Pat these. Maroon. Yeah, they did get Pat Maroon, but I just think it's so hard for this team to score goals at times. I think, um, and like I honestly think, I I honestly think Pasternak might add like six wins to this team this year. I think he's been so so impactful because we just don't have the goal scoring be- besides him. You know, Marshawn's pretty good, and Coil. I think Coil and Zaka have been you know impre- more impressive than I thought taking on those top two center positions, but there is just not enough consistent goal scoring on this team. So that's kind of where I'm at with this team. They they can goaltend. They're still pretty good on special team set, uh, situations, um, really good in special team situations. It's just, I don't know if they're going to score enough goals 5v5 to win the cup. We're all rooting for another Bruins Leafs matchup, right? Like we're all rooting. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not a fan of those teams, or even if you are a fan of at least one of those teams, you're rooting for, if you're the Maple Leafs would like to stay away, but the Maple Leafs at this point, like every team, that's in the, in the playoffs has beaten them in a heartbreaking way recently. So uh, not yeah. a lot of good opportunities for them. Yeah. I don't know. That team scores a lot of goals. That's the one thing, but like, I don't know. It, it feels we'll see. I, I think the Rangers are the best team in the East, but interesting. The best team in the East doesn't always win. Yeah. I, I, I could see it. I, I could, I don't know. I can't, I can't discredit Florida either. Yeah. I just don't like them. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're annoying. They're incredibly annoying. But, Lightning fans were in on this. We're like, hey, these guys suck. And everyone's like, ah, the plucky underdog Florida Panthers. Like, no, they suck. No, they're really annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. It's no one likes the Tuchucks, right? That That is easily yeah. the worst family in sports. <laughs> worst family in sports. Yeah, that's probably up there. What, what are the other bad families? Um, I don't even know. Like, there, there's probably some war criminals I would take over them. Okay. So. Okay. So it's war. <laughs> it's war, number one to Chuck's. Like number two, like the Manson family. Worst family. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. That, I think that's probably fair. That's r- okay. accurate ranking. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Um, that's uh, that's our rankings of a uh, top two worst families. Uh, this. Why well, I guess that stay past the the plugs at the end of the show. You get the good stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. You get to hear us hate the to Chuck's. So uh, good for them. Um, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, hockey, I, we'll, we'll see what happens in the East. That's just kind of how I view it. Um, I don't know. This, this feels like more of a crapshoot than ever as far as the season goes. It seems like everyone's yeah, yeah. pretty even. Yeah. There, there's like, like six or seven teams that all could like still win the president's trophy at this point. Uh, and, and you know, again, and the, the winner will be like, you know, Vegas still. Yeah, probably. Are you excited for baseball season? Yeah. Yeah. It should be, should be fun. It, it did make me sad when I saw Tyra Glass now in a Dodgers uniform. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little different. Opening day starter too. Um not looking forward to the Red Sox, but you know, we're looking forward to the rest of it. Yeah. Uh sh- sh- should be fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And then uh I don't have much basketball thoughts, Kyle. I I, I meant to start one. I just Yeah. Um no, I mean it's been a good year. I think that there's a lot of good teams, but Boston Denver kind of feels inevitable. We'll see. Not the magic. They're on the come up, but not quite yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, James my, my, Harden my... seems falling off a little bit too. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you got you know, uh, got to get those losses out of the way now for the when the playoffs should start up because you know, he, I mean, he's more of a playoff performer. That might be it. Yeah, um... I think that maybe that's he always he always is so good in the regular season, bad in the playoffs. Now he's doing the opposite. Now it's smart it's thinking, uh, you know, thinking two steps ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's going to work out that way. Yeah, New Orleans might uh, beat them round one. You think so? Uh, interesting. What is uh, what's what's the deal with New Orleans? Uh, is is has Zion played at all? Yeah, he's basically played the whole year. He's almost at his like ah. career high in games played for a season. 
Um, That's cool. Yeah, he's been good. He's been really good of late. Um, they just so they're just so deep. Like they they play 10, 11 guys that are all really good. So they've been really good of late. I I think they could get the Clippers in round one, but we'll see. I might go to a, a Magic playoff game. I don't know because again, I live like fifteen minutes from the stadium. I, I need to start going. Might be worth it. Playoff playoff atmosphere is definitely better in basketball. Like I can understand not liking to go into the regular season games because they get a little the crowds get a little dull. But playoff mm-hmm. atmosphere is usually really good. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe I'll do that. That should be, oh, I could see uh, them play your Knicks. There we go. Go see it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for watching. Kyle, any final thoughts? Uh, no, let's get out of here. All right, let's get out of here again. Thank you, everybody. We do appreciate it. Until next time, have a good one. Peace.